We're at a point in the series where things are getting extremely interesting. I skipped a few turns to prepare for a war, and now we're going after Teddy Roosevelt. Now, I've done quite a few things over the break, mostly things that really didn't matter, though. Uh, pretty much taking my two warriors, my two spearmen, and two archers, and we're going to begin the siege of St. Louis. Now, St. Louis is a new city that Teddy's decided to settle, um, approaching my empire slowly. And one thing I, I need to mention uh, that just occurred probably over the last, like, five turns is America has another settler, and he's probably behind this fog of war somewhere around here because... Uh, Originally, I had I had my dudes all set up, ready to go, and I saw a settler, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna use the old Civ 5 strategy and stop them from moving. Uh, no, that does not work anymore. Settlers go straight through. I didn't know that that was a thing. Maybe everybody else knew. There were some things that clearly I uh, I I completely forgot. I, I try to keep up with the development and kind of keep in mind some of the things that they're telling us. Like one of those examples being the whole harbor thing. I apologize. I. I completely blanked out on the fact that uh, Lisbon could just build a harbor. So I bought I bought this tile, and uh, and now we're building a harbor here. Ten more turns, kind of sucks. It's gonna take some time, but um, we do have two cra crab resources around it, so um, it's getting a nice two plus gold adjacency bonus. So that's very nice. Um, anyways, go back and go back to the war. Not only does America have a settler somewhere behind this fog of war, but so does England. Things are heating up, and over the break, I did just try to, you know, I try to figure out, like, hey, England, do you want to go to war against America? And she was like, nah. She said, nah, dude, and and that's that's where I had to leave it. Um, luckily, Greece and England still like me. Um, it doesn't surprise me at all that England settled in this uh, in this location, like, way far away from London. The reason that's going to be a pretty common thing for this AI because the AI wants to go out and settle faraway cities because they want to have a city on every continent. So, England's going to be kind of annoying in that sense. I, I didn't even realize that, but this AI is going to be kind of frustrating, I think, for uh, a lot of people. Because she's going to be doing that sort of thing a lot. Anyways, um, she actually might be okay with, with Washington now. She didn't like Washington originally because, you know, her, her agenda says that, you know, she doesn't like civs on continents where she doesn't have a city on. Or whatever. It's, yeah. So... We're gearing up for a war. Obviously, I settled this city to kind of forward settle Teddy Roosevelt, and um, it's it's not going to be a very good city, unfortunately. I mean, uh, you know, maybe I should try to like, I don't know, have more pride, I guess. But uh, <laughs> have more pride? I don't know. Have more German civilization pride. But the reason why is it it wasn't in a good location for housing. Now we might be able to fix the housing situation. You know how like naturally I settled this city in a spot with three extra housing. I actually don't even know. How Lisbon is doing housing wise it doesn't look good yeah it probably the city-state probably wasn't given a whole lot of housing either but because uh, there's no fresh water around so that kind of makes sense if there's no fresh water then you're gonna be neutral you won't be getting any extra housing due to your location uh, but anyways I still think it's gonna be a good city because we've got a bunch of wheat around um, a lot of bonus resources eventually we'll get extra citrus and truffles so that'll be useful and then I did get up my first trader exclusively for um, actually, it's kind of a wombo combo punch here because I wanted to get the trader here to build infrastructure so that we could get, you know, units from the capital to the front lines a little bit faster, as well as it's going to help the city, you know, grow a little bit faster, get it, give it some extra production, things like that. So, um, that's pretty much all that's happened. You know, I've obviously gone, got a few civics and technologies, but now it's time for war. And, you know, luckily, uh, Teddy denounced us, right? He denounced us. I can't remember. First, he gave me an apple pie, and then he said, F you. Like, that's just a, that's just a great combination right there. Um, so we're going to declare a formal war. Warmongering penalty is light. And keep in mind, we'll be declaring this war in the classical era, which makes it a lot easier to uh, get away with taking some cities. Okay, so making this move, we'll start a war with America. Really? Nah. Not really. Okay. Now, the war, I... <laughs> okay, uh, righteousness. I, I, I see. Um, this war might not technically be... I, I think I for sure can take St. Louis. I, I don't think that should be an issue. I'm not at war with the city state too, right? No. Um, but that kind of scared me. I almost misclicked there. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to take Washington. Washington will be a lot more difficult. And I am building... Uh, I plan to buy a siege tower in the next turn because I have enough money for it. 
and I also have more builders coming out because I want to continue to improve tiles and things like that. Uh, last thing over the break is I did get up my first boat, so uh, that's pretty nice. So yeah, okay. Anyways, let's let's approach the city and see how we do. Um, let's move the melee units in first. Ooh, okay. So I was not expecting that. I thought it was relatively undefended. Um, nonetheless. We should still be okay, I hope, unless they bring in reinforcements. You know what? I didn't even check on Teddy's military size. Maybe kind of a bad idea. Oh, he's not good. Oh, he's doing bad. Okay, well, that's great news. This might be all he has, to be honest. This might be it. All right, well, I need to approach the city. Um, I'll move the spearmen in first like this. I might regret that decision, but we'll see. And I also need to get this battering ram in there. So let's unchain this and then try to get it closer to uh, adjacent to the city. Hmm. I think we should probably put this guy on the hill. And then as for you, you good sir, you're kind of screwed. But if I put you across the river, it'd be a lot harder to do, you know, lots of damage. So this, you know, this is just kind of a test run right here. We might actually have to back away from the city for a split second because I don't know how how badly, like putting the spearmen sandwiched in between these two warriors might not have been a good idea. I'm glad I put the spearmen there. Maybe this is why Teddy's dealing with uh, a lack of a military. I figured, you know, the tundra is gonna, the tundra is gonna do that with barbarians. Okay, so they get at least two attacks. You know what? I also put him in open terrain. That was also probably not the best of ideas. Good, good, good. So the warrior did not attack me from the city. Need more amenities, need more housing. What do you mean? How many more amenities do we need? Uh, yeah, so, like, pr pretty much there's this new mechanic like war exhaustion, war, war wariness. Um, we do need to be careful of that, and that's why in, uh, in this city I'm building an entertainment district. Also, I did get up my theater square, so we have a theater square and a campus, which is a really good, uh, combination. You really want to make sure you have both of these. I'm actually making more culture than I am science per turn, which is... Kind of, I have not done that yet in all the kind of practice run-throughs I've done in Civ 6. So, you know, that's kind of fun. That's kind of interesting. I wanted to bring this scout around just so I knew what was going on back behind enemy lines. So we'll see how this works. You know, these archers are only going to be able to attack the city, so I guess we'll just focus on the city for now. I'll be able to attack, the actually, the city twice, which I have no problem with. Now, if I can, you know what, I might want to swap out, hmm, I think what I, I will do, see, the problem putting the spearmen here is uh, that it was an open terrain, and that's not the best of, of moves. What I'm thinking is, I, I have to move, the, I can't move this spearman on the hill, unfortunately, because the new, you know, movement changes to Civ Six. I don't really know what I would do with this warrior. Either way, so you know what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to press forward. We're going to go inside of the forest. That'll give him an extra defensive bonus, which he would kind of technically need since he's just a warrior. Um, there's nothing to pillage, unfortunately, because it's just too new of a city. And then what I'm thinking is backing away for us just for a second and then moving this spearman in there. Now, I can't attack the city directly. That might be a terrible idea, though. Oh, am I getting the battering ram bonus? I am not. So I should not attack the city until we get the battering ram there. Definitely. Uh, most, a lot of our, a lot of our cities need more housing. And uh, that's why I'm researching the aqueduct in two turns. So I'm hoping that helps. Oh, okay, that's interesting. You're going to attack the archer, which is kind of a unique choice. <laughs> I mean, I would have, I don't know. I guess that's kind of a good idea. Now, I've left one archer back behind. I might end up changing that. The reason why I did this is because this city is completely undefended. If I'm going to change my mind, then I need to change my mind now. Now, I can get there in two turns. One, two. Um, I'm going to see how this turn goes. I'm going to leave that scout there, I think. First things first, though. Let me, let me move this guy there. Let's start doing damage to this warrior. At the very least, if we can maybe distract this city... That would be good. Or distract some of their units. With, with this conflict taking place out there. You can probably just sit there and heal. And then I might swap you out. I can almost kill, kill that spearman. Oh my gosh. We do quite a bit of damage if we were to attack the city. 
It makes sense. Okay, so I'm gonna save my promotions. Again, saving promotions is now a thing. Something that, you know, you'd have to actually... That was just an option in Civ Five: Brave New World. So I will save my promotions. Yeah, these archers don't do too much damage. I think we attack the city. I might lose an archer here, but... I think I would need to. Well, you know what? Actually, before I do that, I, I will attack. I'm at least going to attack with this guy, because he's got nothing else to do with his life. I mean, his life is pretty much meaningless on this ship, this sheep hill territory, so we might as well use him. Okay, not bad. If we just take the city, more than likely his units will run away. The walls are pretty much dead, right? I do want to see if there is an imp... Yeah, the archers are just not going to do that much damage. I am worried, and I'm, I'm considering hitting th that, that scout with the archers instead of hitting it with the city, because it doesn't even do that much damage anyways. Okay, well, I'm going to use this spearman to attack like this. Uh, I'm going to assume that because Washington has kind of a lower military, that I'll be safe enough to bring in this reinforcements. Now, I don't know if I'm going to need it, but, you know, we'll see. I just don't think it does as much damage. I think that the scout could be annoying. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the scout. Hopefully get him to run away. I really don't know how the AI would use its scouts yet. So I'm just that's why I'm kind of being more safe there. Okay, yeah, I know you got a promotion. Let's see what they decide to do. They're not in good situation. Oh, so they were aggressive with the scout. I I'd say I made kind of the right decision, especially if uh. Well, let's see. I mean, I I think I think so. I think that was good. I mean, a scout in the red pretty much is, is, was his health. You want open borders really badly. Um, I know you have a settler, though, so I'm not going to give this to you. I'm sorry. Actually, you know, it would be good because I want to be on England's good side, but if I'm able to eliminate Washington early on, I've got to figure out somebody else to eliminate, and it's probably going to be England next. That's my guess. Okay, so we got the aqueduct. We've got to start spamming that sucker out. Let me figure out what happens first with this war, though. Okay, so I will push that guy forward since he can't do anything else. Ooh, nice trader. Hello, trader. I think we take down the city. I'm pretty sure we can. Actually, no, we probably won't be able to take down the city. But I'll, I'll try to. I mean, I'll, I'll focus on it. I just don't want to lose any units. Mm, it's going to be close. Yeah, no, we're not going to be able to take it this time. This time around. Well, the warrior should hit this, their warrior. Just to kind of put the pressure on him. I could kill this guy. But no, let's just, let's just attack the city. Hopefully not lose any units. It will be close though. It will be kind of close. And then I'll have three archers. It's for sure dead next turn. But this is kind of telling if, uh, yeah, you know, that warrior might be dead. Well, we might lose a warrior. That's not too bad. Again, there's no iron around, so I'm kind of screwed in that sense. Mathematics. Um, a catapult would have been nice. You know what I haven't bought? I haven't bought my siege tower yet, have I? Is there anything down the line that I really need? Yes, the Hansa. Um, Do I want to rush the Hansa? We haven't built three mines? That's kind of crazy. I like machinery. Yeah, so let's go ironworking because I love lumber mills. Very big fan of lumber mills. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to purchase my siege tower. Yeah, we're going to have to purchase the Siege Tower here. You can't build... can't purchase, like, city things. So, like, the Aqueduct and things like that. Yeah, we desperately need an Aqueduct. Well, actually, we don't desperately need it, but we do need it. We also need an Entertainment District inside of the capital. Because we're going to need additional amenities. Okay, well, that's good. At least I left this unimproved for now. <clears throat> since it's going to be an Aqueduct anyways. A little bit worried about this battering ram being in that location, but okay. But okay. Alright, you stay there. And uh, we did get another builder, and I'm having these built builders kind of float around, depending on what city needs them. I think I'm going to go up to this city. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go up there. I think that's the city that, that needs it more the most. Also, over the break, I did realize, uh, I did notice a notification popped up. Someone's been defeated. So somebody on the other continent has uh, destroyed somebody else. So 
we don't know anything that you know is going on in the other continent. Ugh, you know, this is kind of weird, because Civ 6, you know, the, the continents are divided into separate... The land masses are divided into different continents, but I really want to... Because it's a continent's map, so I feel obligated to say this is a single continent. Wow, they did not attack us. Hmm, what happened to him? Did he heal? Well, we got very lucky now. I probably should have conserved that archer. That wasn't maybe... Ah, we'll, we'll be fine. I think we're going to be okay. Let's take down this guy. I want to kill their units so they don't fall back to Washington. That's very important. Now, if we can take this guy down with this warrior, it will keep him safe. But it wouldn't be like the worst thing. It's not the worst thing in the world. There we go. I think we got it. Doing that little twirl there. I, I love the little combat animation. I think that stuff looks awesome. That's, that's the way I see it. Okay, so yeah, we want to take this guy out. Luckily, again, no one's flanked us just yet. Hey, where'd that traitor go? We should have killed him, I thought. Or, or got him. Okay, so now here's the hard part. Um, I actually don't know for a sh for sure. I don't think you can... There's... You can't... And you, there's no... You can no longer keep the city and then raise it later. I'm pretty sure that that is a thing. I have not seen the option for it. Um, I don't know if I want to make this choice right now. Please, can I not make this choice right now? I'm probably gonna raise it, and um, I'd rather just raise the population and then and then build a settler there. Anyways, it's it's easier to do that, and I think it's it was a little bit tougher in Civ Five, but now in Civ Six, it, it's not that bad. So if I want this location later, which I probably will, then I'll do it later. But let's raise the city, and I do like that. Uh, oh, whoa! I did not realize this warmongering penalty for raising the city is now heavy. Oh, snap. That is not good. Is lights for keeping it. Um, penalty will be either refunded or doubled at the end of the war, depending on whether or not you keep the city. If I keep it, double the warmongering penalty. Ouch. And this is tripled if I raise it. So, now I'm in a situation here. I mean, I guess I'll keep it, but man, our amenities are going to suck. We're going to keep it, and I do have a builder coming up this way. Do you have access to new amenities? Of course you don't. Of course you don't. Well, I can still give it back to America if I want to. I'd rather just eliminate this sieve, though. I'd rather just take him down completely. Part of the reason why I have more culture, though, in my city, I just have a lot of cities. I've got, you know, five cities. I had four cities. They all had monuments. They're all generating, you know, that's two culture per monument, which is nice. Okay, so there we go. We've taken out St. Louis. That's a pretty big deal. Let's give ourselves a promotion. Oh, you know what? No. Let's kill the scout so he doesn't run away. So the last American dies in St. Louis. And uh, I'm sure if we check now on the possibility of a domination, or I'm sorry, yeah, if we check on his score, 75. Looks like I've gone down in score too. 163? It looks like, well, I just dropped in the rank at least. So he still has some stuff. He definitely still has some stuff. We'll have to see how this uh, next episode goes. Obviously, our next video should be dealing with the Siege of Washington. I actually don't know how that's going to go because, especially if they have just a few units defending that city, I, I, I'm not really prepared to face a city with the combat strength of, or the combat defense of 31. That city was at like 20. Um, and because I don't have any, any swordsmen, because there's no iron around, I, I don't really have the melee strength to, to do that much damage. This might be kind of... We might have to wait a little bit, but anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.